test, test. Test, test. Well, this is an interesting start to a meeting. Um, we have a, a backup plan, and let's try to make it work. Good morning. It's my pleasure to call this meeting of the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality to order. Today is July 10th, 2019. The time is 9.35. Um, with us today are Commissioner Emily Lindley and our General Counsel, Mary Smith. I'm John Nearman. And Ms. Smith, I'll ask you to call the first item. Item number one is an application by Joshua Land Farm LLC for new TPDES permit number WQ0015663001. To authorize the disposal of treated domestic wastewater. The parties have been notified that the commissioners will not take oral argument, but may ask questions. Those who have signed in will be noted for the record. Uh, Commissioner Lindley, we have a single hearing request on this matter. Ms. Beaton, whose property is adjacent to the applicant's property, um, has filed a request. Um, her property, however, is nearly a mile from the proposed facility. And um, given the, the relatively small discharge from, this, from the proposed facility and her distance, um, I don't think that she's affected in a manner different from the general public. So I would, um, my view is that she is not an affected person entitled to a contested case hearing. I would add too that um, separately as an independent uh, reason for denying the request is in, in my reading of the issues as she articulated them, she doesn't tie them to the proposed facility. They appear to be complaints about ongoing activities at the site and um, so uh, it's my view that we should deny this, uh, this hearing request. I, I'm in agreement, and I would just add to that that it's my understanding her um, property is upstream of the discharge route even, and so that I, make, I think that's more, even more compelling to, uh, as a reason to deny, and so I can make a motion if, if you're ready. Great. I move that we deny the hearing request of Sue Beaton, that we issue TBDES permit number WQ001, Five six six three zero zero one to Joshua Land Farm LLC as recommended by the executive director and adopt the executive director's response to comment. The motion has been made. I second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Item number two is an application by Brontex Materials Incorporated for air quality standard permit registration number 154995. Again, the parties have been notified that the commissioners will not take oral argument but may ask questions. Those who have signed in on this matter, um, their presence will be noted for the record. So <clears throat> on this item and on the next one, um, we are looking at standard permits for concrete batch plants under Texas Health and Safety Code Section 382.05195. And the statute bars a hearing to requesters who reside outside 440 yards from the proposed facility. Um, on this particular item, we have a single request, um, uh, Mr. Friesenhand, and he clearly does not live within the 440 yards. And accordingly, I move that we deny the request of Mark Friesenhahn 
that we issue air quality standard permit registration number 154995 to Brontex Materials Incorporated as recommended by the executive director and that we adopt the executive director's response to public comment. I second that. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Item number three is an application by Bosky Solutions LLC for issuance of air quality standard permit for concrete batch plant registration number 152013. The parties have been notified that the commissioners will not hear oral argument on this matter but may ask questions. The parties um, who have signed in, or those who have signed in, um, their presence will be noted for the record. Today, Representative Bill Zedler and a representative of Senator Powell, Mr. Gary Jones, um, statewide elected officials are in attendance today and they uh, have requested to speak on this item. As is the commission's custom, elected officials may make remarks about pending contested matters before the commissioners begin their deliberations. So I recommend that we begin with Representative Bill Zedler followed by um, Mr. Jones from Senator Powell's office. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Representative. If you'll approach, we'll see if we can find a working mic for you. Uh, although uh, I've never been known for having, oh, you know what, it, the mic it is works. on. But I was going to tell you, I've kind of been known to, uh, uh, I grew up uh, whispering on a sawmill, so uh, uh, nobody's ever said they had trouble hearing me. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak today. I came to speak uh, for the people, my constituents, that live uh, with inside the 440 uh, as well as outside because uh, here it is, what I've looked at is a simple search onto the TCEQ uh, uh, website reveals dozens of violations open at any given time and frequently the remedy takes months to become compliant uh, again. Non-compliant events and violations are common with cement batch plants. Uh, this is not a question of if it will happen, it's a question of when it will happen. And I've talked to many experts who agree on that. In a typical case, these facilities are in areas zoned for moderate to heavy industrial. But in this case, they want to put this batch plant right smack in the middle of residential areas. There's nothing else around here. There's no other industry. Right in the middle of a residential area. Uh, and a blowout or any other non-compliant event will directly and adversely impact those residents 24-7 until it is resolved. Your Honor, this case warrants a variation from the process. This is an exception to the standard. No one believes that these facilities should be put in residential areas. And in fact, all incorporated areas in Texas regulate them to industrial or higher zoned areas. Uh, these Texans in this incorporated area of Tarrant County are relying on the TCEQ. The further thing is, is this. This individual that is asking for this permit has a history of violating these same rules and laws. The last person you want to give a cement batch plant permit is someone who's shown disdain for other environmental quality laws. And so I'm asking you to not approve the permit for this individual at this location. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative. Thank you, Representative. And uh, Mr. Jones from Senator Powell's office. 
Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Chairman for the opportunity to speak. Um, uh, Senator Powell uh, sent me today to read a letter um, and uh, on behalf of her constituents in Mansfield. Um, it's my understanding that there were nearly 500 individuals at the original uh, public meeting months ago, so there's grave concern, um, as you can see here, and as we could see from past um, public meetings about this batch plan and the affected parties. Um, Senator Powell sent the following letter um, on June 28th to you, Mr. Chairman, and I'm just going to reiterate it to put it into the record. Um, she writes, Mr. Chairman, a state senator for the site of Bosky Solutions LLC, proposed air quality permit 152013. I am writing to reiterate my opposition to the proposed permit. I'm opposed to this application because the concrete dust and particulate matter from the plant will negatively affect the health of my constituents. According to the request and request for reconsideration provided to my office on June 17th, 2019, the TCEQ is responsible for the protection of air quality under the TCAA. Specifically, TCAA is stated to safeguard the state's air resources from pollution by controlling or abating air pollution and emission of air contaminants. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, concrete batch plants are a significant source of sulfur dioxide, nitri nitrogen oxide, and carbon monoxide. The EPA states that these sources may lead to significant health and respiratory problems. This site is an incompatible location for a new concrete batch plant and will be a nuisance which will negatively affect the life and health of the residents of the area, including the health of children and the elderly. My constituents and the entire Southeast Tarrant County community will be adversely affected by this proposed plant, and I am opposed to the approval of this permit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Commissioner Lindley, um, well, Mr. Jones, let me be begin by just addressing, you know, I appreciate you reading the letter, um, and, and I understood that the Senator did send me a letter. I just want to explain that I have not, um, before this morning, had the benefit of the letter because the ex parte uh, communication prohibition uh, prevents me from, from looking at those types of materials. So I, I, I think that message may have gotten back to your office, but I wanted to be clear about that in the event that that was not, was not understood. Um, so, uh, Commissioner Lindley, do you have any sort of uh, comments on the front end before we get um, into this? <clears throat> the only comment I would initially make is just that, uh, just to be clear that the understanding of what's happening today, so today we're making the decision to grant a hearing or not. Uh, today we're not you know, um, if, if a hearing gets granted, that doesn't mean that the permit's issued today. And so um, if we end up going that way, I just wanted to make that point. I, I'm of the opinion of granting a hearing. I guess I'll say that. I, I am too. And okay. why, don't, why don't we just get into the reasons okay. for that. Um, and I appreciate the representative's um, um, suggestion, admonition, that there ought to be uh, 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 an exception or a variance in this case. I'm, I'm loath to do that, number one, because um, in the, being an agency of the executive branch, we're an instrumentality of the legislature, and I don't want to get sideways from the legislature, so we really try to stay close to our legal authorities. So when the legislature says 440 yards, for example, we look at, we look at 440 yards. Um, in this case, there were numerous um, requests, some, some within many beyond the 440 yards. I think where we're headed this morning is to grant a hearing request so that uh, this, this proposed permit can be challenged at the State Office of Administrative Hearings. Um, but those folks who reside beyond 440 yards will not be, um, be allowed to be parties to that, um, to that hearing. Um, I did have a question, Commissioner Lindley, about um, Alyssa and Richard Brown, whether they meet the distance limitation. And so for those two requesters, I would refer them to SOA and have SOA make the determination as to whether or not they're entitled to a hearing. And that leaves us with eight remaining requesters who live um, within the 440 yards. Um, however, one of those, uh, Mr. Wilson, Kenny Wilson, failed to identify any relevant or material issues. And so that leaves us with just um, seven uh, requesters who have made 
a valid request in my view. And um, why don't I offer those names and you can let me know whether you That'd are on great. the same page or yeah. not. Um, Baines, Luna, Moore, Holson, Smitherman, Smitherman, and, and Stewart. I, I agree and I would be comfortable uh, with the motion recognizing those people and then the addition of referring the Browns over for effective determination. I think, great. I think that's great. Um, and the requester has presented um, a number of issues, but is, is often the case. Several of those issues are outside our, our jurisdiction. They're beyond what we can lawfully review in an application like this. The, the issues that were raised that I think are appropriate to refer to SOA are whether the proposed permit will negatively affect air quality whether the proposed permit is protective of human health and safety, whether it is protective of physical property, whether it is protective of animals, vegetation, and the environment, and whether it is protective against dust emissions, including, including nuisance dust. I would agree on those issues. I think um, that's, that's where I came down as well. Uh, and if you'd like to make a motion, Unless there's other things you wanted to yeah, and let include. me just let me just preview what all. Um, um, I think uh, I think an ADR referral would be premature at this point. I don't I think agree. that was being constructive, so I'm not going to include that. Um, given the number of parties and uh, the number of issues, I think a hearing duration of 180 days is appropriate. Um, and I didn't um, I didn't see any new issues raised in the request for reconsideration, and so I would. Um, there were several requests for reconsideration that were filed. I would, uh, I plan to deny those as part of the motion. I'm comfortable with that. Um, right. And um, I might be jumping ahead. You might, we're going to say this, but I do appreciate everyone that's traveled here today for that. Um, public involvement is always a good thing. And appreciate y'all making the trip. Yeah, I, I echo that. Thank you for being here. This is, this is your meeting room. Commissioner Lindley, um, I move that we grant the hearing request by Patricia Baines, Renee Luna, Sean Moore, Vicki Polson, Misty Smitherman, Larry Smitherman, and Paula Wright Stewart, that we refer the hearing requests of Alyssa Brown and Richard Wayne Brown to SOA to determine if they are affected persons under Texas Health and Safety Code Section 382.058C, that we deny all other hearing requests and requests for reconsideration that we refer the application to SOA for a contested case hearing concerning the following issues. Whether the permit will be protective of the health and safety of the requesters and their families, including sensitive subgroups and physical property. Whether the permit will negatively affect air quality. Whether the pro proposed permit will be protective of general welfare, including vegetation, animals, and the environment and whether the permit will be protective against dust emissions generated from the proposed plant, including nuisance dust emissions. I further move that we deny all remaining issues and that we set a hearing duration of 180 days from the date of the preliminary hearing until the issuance of the proposal uh, for decision. I second. The motion has been made. I second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Item number four is the consideration of an administrative order for the Hall Street State Superfund site, which includes the description of the selected remedial action and a determination of responsible parties. The ED is the moving party and should present the matter, followed by any interested persons, and we have several people signed in to speak. And finally, OPIC. Uh, the General Counsel's Office recommends limiting the parties to five minutes for presentations, and the Executive Director staff is here to present the item. Good morning. Does your mic work? We'll bring you one.
Not yet. Hello. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners, General Counsel, Public Interest Counsel. On behalf of the Executive Director, I'm Theda Strickler with the Litigation Division. With me are Terry Andrews and Monica Harris of the Remediation Division. Item four is an administrative order to conduct remedial activities for the Hall Street State Superfund site located near Dickinson in Galveston County, Texas. As part of the Superfund process, the TCEQ has completed its, its investigation of the site. The groundwater at the site is contaminated with semi-volatile and vol volatile organic compounds. After the appropriate notice and comment period, the executive director has selected the remedial action. For on-site groundwater, the selected remedial action is a plume management zone with limited in situ groundwater treatment. For off-site groundwater, the selected remedial action is a plume management zone and or decontamination using in situ groundwater, groundwater treatment. Potentially responsible parties were given the opportunity to fund or conduct remedial activities. However, no good faith offers to perform the remedial action were received. Therefore, there are no agreeing respondents. The order names seven responsible parties. The executive director respectfully recommends issuing this administrative order for remedial activities at the Hall Street State Superfund site pursuant to Chapter 361 of the Texas Health and Safety Code. We are available to answer any questions you may have regarding this matter. I have none. Commissioner Lindley? I have no questions right now. Thank you. So we have several interested uh, persons who wish to address the commission. And uh, let's begin with James DiOrio. And forgive me if I'm m mangling your, your name. And let's <laughs> make like sure we got it. with a D in front of it. Hey, your microphone works. This is Does great. This We're is good, a good, good start. News. I just... <laughs> If Good you'd morning. Please re you. repeat your name. My name is James DiOrio. And any I'm representing myself and my wife, right. uh, my wife Melissa DiOrio. Um, at this time, I just wanted. We, I came here today to see if we could be removed from the uh, responsible persons uh, that are listed on this. It says seven names. We got a list with a lot more than seven names. I'm not sure if we're down to seven names or if the, the, some of these duplicates are adding up to seven names. But my wife and I are listed as responsible persons. This property was left to uh, us by my grandfather after his passing five years ago. Um, and so I'm confused as to how we would become responsible parties for this. We want to make sure that uh, we aren't sent a bill or something for the remediation. It's just been a little bit unclear. So that's kind of what I'm here to represent today and ask these questions of everybody here and see uh, what would be the steps required to get taken off the, the PRP that's on this list here. I don't know. It, is, that, can, is that your... Th that's your only concern. That's why. That, that is my only concern. Comment. I'm happy to okay. push forward with the remediation and, and at this time that they're re recommending. So. Okay. And in a moment, um, I'll ask the executive director to respond to that. I'm, I may share some additional, <coughs> excuse me, some additional thoughts. Uh -huh. But uh, why don't we get through the through the public comments? Of course. And, and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Kelly Brown. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Kelly Brown, and I'm an attorney today representing um, the Dow Chemical Company and Roman Haas, Texas, Inc. Uh, both Dow and Roman Haas have a long history of addressing solid waste issues in this state when credible evidence links them to the site. Um, in this case, that's just not there. Um, TCQ and, and its present predecessor agencies have been dealing with the site for almost 40 years. Um, and only now is the executive director requesting this administrative order. The passage of time, we believe, uh, makes clear that the executive director will be unable to meet his requirements under the Solid Waste Disposal Act, showing an imminent sub substantial danger to health, safety, or the uh, environment. There are no shipping tickets, manifests, or other documentary evidence linking Dow or Roman Haas to the site and uh, the executive director is apparently relate, um, basing um, at least Dow and Roman Haas's involvement on some statements made decades after the facts that gave rise to the potential liability. 
We don't think the executive directors made all reasonable attempts to identify all potentially responsible parties as required by statute. Um, and we think that's a mandatory requirement. And while it's unable or it's unclear if the commission should ever issue such an order as proposed today, we think it's clear that no order should be issued at this time and no order should be issued against the Dow or Roman Haas. But that does conclude my comments. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kelly, did, did either of your clients offer comments? I understood there were not any comments when the um, proposed order was, was put out for? I'm not clear if that's the case or not. Okay, appreciate it. Mr. Latimer. Mr. Latimer, if you'll just repeat your name and any affiliation for the record and then have at it. I'm Doug Latimer. I live in Morgan's Point. Uh, I'm an engineer, small businessman. Um, I'm in, I want to talk about this piece of property down in uh, Galveston County. First, uh, let me thank you for letting me be up here and to thank you for your service to the state. Uh, my, my partner and I bought this land, uh, the pollution occurred back in the 50s and 60s, and we bought this land back in 1982, kind of the long-term investment for, from the Lobita estates for our families. Um, we were not aware that there was even a Superfund site until about 93 when one of the gentlemen from the TCEQ called and said, can we come on to your property and we want to do some investigating. I said, fine, get on out there. We're glad to help you if you can... If there's something we need to clean up, we're glad to do it. We've never used this ground for anything but cattle grazing and have uh, uh, never allowed anybody to store or dump anything on it, and we're not aware of anything. Uh, here in December, uh, we got uh, the registered letters telling us that we were a PRP, and we kind of caught us by surprise. Uh, so anyway, uh, that, that's what it does all about it we're, we've got three acres that are involved to what extent I'm not sure it appears to be a mainly underwater under, under underground and some from uh, maybe have had some dumping on the thing uh, we want to assist and cooperate with TCEQ uh, the gentleman and they've all been super really good to work with and good to talk to but they're limited in what they can tell me, and I'm lim you know, and I don't even know the questions of some of the things to ask them. Uh, my goal is to get, get us off of here. We haven't done anything, and I'm, uh, I want to find out what I need to do. I've read your little blue book, and it says if I do all of these things, I may get off the list. But I don't know if that's a 1% chance or a 99% chance. And, and I, I'm kind of stuck in the, 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 the answer always is, well, you need to get yourself an attorney and um, as you know, environmental attorneys are somewhat limited and they got a high regard for themselves and I'm proud for them, but uh, you know, I could spend a whole lot of money defending three acres of land for something I may not need to do. So my goal is to try to uh, figure out how I can work with y'all uh, or get your people, because uh, you know, they got their ethics and I understand that and I support that. Uh, and get this done and yet get myself off this PRP list. That's my goal. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm going to um, have some additional thoughts for you and, and all of the interested persons who spoke this morning in a moment, but to your particular question about, you know, just, just what do I do? How do I approach this? I'm, I'm not in a position to, to give you any advice. Um, um, but I think a lawyer, as expensive as they are, might be in a position to give you some advice. Um, I would invite you to uh, visit with the folks in our Office of uh, Public Interest Council. I want to be clear that they, are, they do not represent um, individual members of the public. Their purpose is to uh, be a, a second set of eyes and, and uh, provide independent analysis in the public's interest, but they may be in a position to go a little bit farther and provide a little bit more um, constructive advice than, than I can. Um, and then I'll have some additional comments, as I mentioned, for, for everybody who spoke this morning in a moment. And uh, do we have a, a, 
Okay. So I think it's just those three. Uh, Commissioner Lindley, do you have any questions or comments at this point? Uh, no, not at this point. So I, I think my question, I'll just open it up to the executive director staff to address the concerns that you heard this morning about how did I get on this list and how do I, how do I get off this list? So I'll address uh, Mr. DiOrio and Mr. Latimer's comments together because they are simili similarly situated um, in that they own portions of the site property. Um, first of all, I do want to say they have both been very cooperative with us, um, very helpful in providing the information that we've needed. Um, but they do both own portions of the site and under statute, the Health and Safety Code, um, property owners are considered responsible parties and that is why they are on the order as responsible parties. Any additional comments? I guess it's the same answer for, for Dow and Rome Haas. For, for Dow and Roman Haas, they are on the list because we have um, evidence in the nature of business records between them and the transporter that took waste to the site. Um, there is some litigation potential here with, with the responsible party, so I don't want to get into too much detail of what evidence entails, but we have business records between them and the transporter that um, disposed of the waste on the site. So that is why they're on the list. Thank you. Commissioner Lindley, any additional questions or comments at this point? No, not at this point. Thank you. Let's hear from OPIC. Uh, good morning. Um, I, I have reviewed the material for this order, and uh, I understand the statutory scheme under which the executive director uh, is working. and. Uh, I recommend approval of this administrative order as presented by the executive director. Uh, thank you, and, and I, I agree with that. And let me provide a little bit of more of my understanding about this area of law. It's it's controversial, and it's, uh, Texas's uh, state Superfund legal authorities um, follow from federal authorities, and what our legislatures were grappling with is how to address contaminated properties. And I think any way, any way you slice it, it's gonna be unfair to someone. What they have done in the statute is to identify classes of people or entities who are responsible, um, even those people who have zero culpability for the contamination. And I imagine that the alternative is to place that burden on the taxpayers. So. The, the authorities that we have, the, the statutes that we have in this area, just define your liability by your, by your class. Are you a property owner? Are you a transporter? Are you a generator of waste? Um, and um, without regard to, to culpability, you know, it, it is strict liability. Um, so I can appreciate why you're scratching your heads. How did you get pulled into this and identified as a potentially responsible party? That's that's um, that's how it happened. Um, I think you know this is uh, the matters that I've worked worked on in the past. It's um, it's a it's a scrum to figure out who among the responsible parties are going to pay and how much they're going to pay and how to apportion that, and um, that typically gets worked out in the context of litigation, um, typically uh, post order. Um, which we're here today to talk about. I think the best way to, to move this matter forward and um, settle the issue um, to protect the environment and to return um, this property to a potentially useful purpose is to go ahead and, and, um, and enter this order. I agree that it's, it's an appropriate order and that's, that's my view, Commissioner. I would agree, you know, ones like, these are, these are a little more difficult than some of the other issues that we have to get to take up up here, but um, I agree that we do need to move forward adopting the order. You know, I just want to comment that I, I don't think, it, I won't speak for the chairman, but I don't think, I, I don't believe that you all intentionally are pollute, or people that are polluting the land. You know, I heard your comment on that, and um, 
unfortunately it's the copability issue and it that y'all get brought in it, just the fact that you're landowners is why you're in included but um you know like like uh like you all said that you want to take care of the land you you know you, know, you want to get this site cleaned up we believe you and and i appreciate that comment so i don't want this to be taken as we think that you're horrible polluting people because y'all have been uh, very cooperative and and are helping us to get this site cleaned up to where it needs to be. Um, and I can make a motion or I can let you do that if you're ready. Uh, go ahead. <clears throat> Sorry. With that, I move that we adopt the executive director's proposed administrative order concerning the Hall Street State Superfund site. I'm going to offer just a little bit more commentary before Great. I uh, second that. Um, Commissioner, I agree with your comments I've, in, in that they show appreciation for Mr. DiOrio and Mr. Latimer's um, uh, cooperation and help in this matter. Um, and again, I want to um, reiterate that the Office of Public Interest Council um, will help you to the extent that they can help you, recognizing that they can't be your lawyer. And with that, I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. That takes us to the enforcement docket, items 5 through 32. The executive director's staff is here to present these matters. On items 7, 8, and 32, we have several individuals who have signed in and indicated that they don't wish to speak unless the commission has questions, and their presence will be noted for the record. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners, General Counsel, and Public Interest Counsel. For the record, my name is Janice Hernandez, and I am the Agenda Coordinator for the Litigation Division. With me today are Charmaine Backens, also of the Litigation Division, and Brian Sinclair and Melissa Cordell of the Enforcement Division, representing the Executive Director. Pending before you are, are items 5 through 32. The total assessed administrative penalties are $305,361, with $55,793 deferred, $21,345 dollars applied towards supplemental environmental projects and two hundred twenty eight thousand two hundred twenty three dollars to the general revenue the executive director respectfully requests approval of these items and we are available to answer any questions you may have thank you i have none commissioner lindley no questions thank you opec my office reviewed these items and we recommend approval of the provo proposed orders uh, and i think that's the right thing to do so i'll entertain I a motion agree. I move that we adopt items 5 through 32 as recommended by the executive director. The motion has been made. I second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you. Items 33 through 37 are the quadrennial rule reviews for chapters 40, 115, 297, 329, and 342 of Title 30 Texas Administrative Code. The executive director's staff is here to present these matters, and no one has signed in to address the commission on these items. Good morning. Good morning. Chairman, Commissioner, General Counsel, and Public Interest Counsel. For the record, my name is Patricia Duran from the General Law Division. With me this morning is Robin Smith from the Environmental Law Division, representing the Executive Director. Pending before you are items 33 through 37, the adopted rule reviews of 30 TAC chapters 40, 115, 297, 329, and 342. As required by Texas Government Code, Section 2001.039, 
Executive Director staff to conduct the rule reviews of these chapters to determine if the need for the rules within these chapters continue to exist. Proposed notice of the rule review of Chapter 40, published in the February 15, 2019 issue of the Texas Register with a 30-day comment period. Proposed notice of rule reviews of Chapters 115, 297, 329, and 342 were published in the February 1, 2019 issue of the Texas Register, also with a 30-day comment period. No comments were received during the public comment period for these reviews. <clears throat> Based on the review of these chapters, the executive director has determined that these reasons for the rules continue to exist. We respectfully re recommend approval of the adoption of the rule reviews of 30 TAC chapters 40, 115, 297, 329, and 342. Additionally, staff requests authorization to make non-substantive revisions necessary to comply with Texas Register requirements. Thank you, project managers and attorneys assigned to each of these chapters are here with us to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. I have none. Commissioner Lindley? No questions. Mr. McWhorter? OPIC recommends adoption of these reviews and readoption of these chapters as recommended by the executive director. I agree. These rules still serve a purpose. I think we should adopt the reviews and readopt the rules. I agree. With that, I move that we adopt the rule reviews and readopt the rules in 30 Texas Administrative Code, chapters 40, 115, 297, 329, and 342 without amendment. The motion has been made. I second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you. Item number 38 is the public comment session. And we do not have anyone signed in to speak at this time. So that takes us to the end of the items posted for open session. And items 39 through 42 are for closed session, and the commission will not meet in closed session today. The time is 10.16, and we are adjourned. <laughs>